What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? Get my collar right. What's going on? What's happening? It's your man, Ken Brisbane, and I'm coming through to chop it up with you. I got a dope bill for you, and today I'm talking about gender and what is a woman's place. Today I'm going to be reading from the Bible, and I'm also going to be reading from the Kabbalion. Got the Kabbalion. Got my Bible. And then I'm going to give you some names of some historical women that were warriors and uh, rule breakers of their time. And I'm going to use their name to suggest that maybe that we, we have gender all wrong. And maybe our ideals of gender is more state sanctioned than natural. Uh, I personally don't believe that we have a natural view of gender. So I'm going to use the uh, the Kabbalion. The Kabbalion, again, just in case you want to go get a copy. Real, 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 real great, great book. And it's, it's small, but you may not complete it. And if you do complete it, you're going to have to go back because the gems in it is real powerful. And the principles in it is super whole. Okay, so I'm going to be reading from this, the Kabbalion, and then I'm going to be reading from the Bible. And what I'm going to be talking about is gender. And it's my personal uh, uh, personal belief that we look at gender upside down. And the way that we look at gender is more about state-sanctioned gender, what the state says, and what's natural. Uh, I don't believe we live in a natural, so we don't know what gender is or what masculinity is or what femininity is. We view it from a state sanctioned viewpoint instead of a principal viewpoint. And I'm going to be reading from the Kabbalion to talk about principles. But I'm going to give you guys some names of some interesting women in history, too, that on your free time, you may want to go check out because in their day, man, they kicked up dust. And you can call these women, hey, the first feminists, right? So I got some notes, and I'll tell you some names from Grace O'Malley to Joan of Arc. Some women at their particular time that was that was that that wasn't good with sitting in the crib or wasn't good with being submissive. These women wanted to, you know, get it in in the battlefield, right? So we're gonna talk about those women. So again, just want to show you. So you can go get your own copy of the Kabbalion and the Bible. And I just read from these books because I'm a student. And I'm not trying to be right or wrong. I'm just sharing perspective. You know what I'm saying? So before I get started, let me uh let me plug my shit. And that's dealings over feelings. I got the whole rules come out maybe next week, tentatively. And that's strictly for the ladies. Then I got something for the fellas talking about uh, self-love. So that's probably December. All right. So where I'm going to get started is I'm going to get started with the Bible and how our view of gender and man and woman is not necessarily natural. It's basically about who wins the war. And the longest war on, in the world, from my observation, is the war between men and women. Okay. If we really dig into research, we see that uh, the primary deities at one point were female deities. This is not my opinion, and this is not me simping, neither. This is what the data suggests, okay? And then all of a sudden, you see a role reversal because things always flip around in nature. So around the world, you see a lot of indigenous tribes, a lot of ancient, more older t people their deity was more feminine based or at least asexual and it wasn't a actual male deity. Okay. Male deity is new. All right. So for us saying he, uh, father, that's new. Okay. That's new. Um, so while we look at, uh, gender, the way we do is from the Bible. The reason why it, it's not as bad as it was before, but the reason why men, you know, ruled their house with an iron fist 
was because of information from the Bible. Now, understand the majority of the public is illiterate. Even though they read, they can't, they don't comprehend. They don't know etymology. They don't know what a verb is. They don't know what a pronoun is. And these are the things that you have to know to know language. Okay. So when the Bible was being read, especially in New World America, it was read by ministers and missionaries. And it was read to people that weren't the most illiterate people. So they take this information and then they pass that information down to their family and they build their family based on the information in this book. Now, when people were forming America and New World America, especially the colonies, they brought a lot of old traditions from their country. Now, before Europeans came to the country, their their area was dominated by this new religion, which was Christianity. Before that, many European nations were what we call pagan, okay? So you see Constantine said, you know, with this cross, we conquer. So for those that think, you know what, Christianity is a white man's religion, people in Europe were converted to Christianity through warfare, okay? Before that, they had tribal religions and religions based on their clan, all right, religion based on their clan, okay? So, when a public is illiterate, your comprehension skills kind of sucks. And if people have to break down ideals for you, then you're going to be in bad shape, okay? So, the reason why we think women are supposed to be submissive and what a man is supposed to do and what a woman is supposed to do is based on biblical narratives, now, mind you, this stuff has a 1,500 to 2,000 year head start on you. So you're born into the narrative. But how we live has an origin, all right? So let's slide to Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, right? <clears throat> Here's the start of it. Here's the start of it with what we call, what they call original sin, right? Supposedly, Eve did something, and this is the reason why women are in the position that they're in, okay? So, to the woman, he says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your who? Husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay, so you see why it's a big deal for women to get married? It's a big deal that is that is ingrained in the culture that if a woman does not get married then pretty much her life ain't shit i'm not saying that that's the narrative a woman could do amazing things but unless she has a man unless she has children her accomplishments are minimized because she doesn't have a husband this is the origin of that thinking okay listen to what it says Great. This is uh, Genesis chapter three, verse 16 to the woman. He says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your pain. I'm sorry, your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. OK, basically, it was saying like, yo, if you didn't do this, you would have just popped out a baby and nothing. And you wouldn't have had no pain. Right. Look, what will your desire be? Will your desire be for conquering? No. Will your desire be for goals? No. Will your desire be to travel the world? No. Will your desire be create? No. Will your desire to be entrepreneurship? No. Will your desire be painting? No. What's your desire? Your desire shall be for who? Not yourself. For your husband. And he shall rule over thee. Now, let's just take this literal. Okay, so this is Genesis chapter 3. Let's take this literal. So prior to Eve supposedly sinning against God for not following instructions to, for eating fruit, right? Then the man and the woman was equal based on this. So because she did that, her curse is to, that her husband is her desire. So if the curse is that her husband shall be does the desire, then it's a lie to say that women are naturally submissive because in her origin, her desire is not her husband's. 
but her desire becomes strictly her husband when she supposedly sins against God. Okay, so this what this is saying, if you read it and comprehend in a woman's natural state, the nurturing and the submissiveness that people claim that's not natural. That's based on a curse. If I'm just reading it from the Bible, I'm just reading it right. This is after they supposedly fell and their eyes are now open. This is Genesis chapter three, verse 16. Mind you. This is a man writing this. This is this is scripture interpreted and and supposedly inspired by man. OK, it says I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Basically, before that, she supposedly didn't have none in pain. You shall bring forth children. Basically, it's saying before that you would have gave birth and nothing. You wouldn't have felt no pain. Your desire shall be for your husband and it shall and he shall rule over you. So what this is saying before Adam and Eve so-called fell, then the husband did not rule over the woman. So basically a woman submitting to a man based off scripture is part of her fall. That's not her original state. If we're just taking this literally. Because her 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 arrival in to, in the planet is not a submissive arrival. Her submissiveness and her desire to just be under a man did not occur until the fall. Take it or leave it. Very interesting, though, because this is written purely by men who phallic worship. Mind you, it's a it's a different type of gay all right <clears throat> so let's keep moving along and i'm going to show you that the way that we look at gender is not natural at all it's state sanctioned now mind you these things <clears throat> these things have a 2000 year head start on you all right so let's slide to first corinthians Let's talk. Let's go to first Corinthians. Now, now, mind you, when you're coming up with ideals, one group of people can't come up with those ideals. OK, no women are involved in this shit. Not none. So the roles of the family, the roles of men and women, no women are like, you know what? I don't agree with that. <laughs> it's all men, again, who phallic worship. Right. So the the scribes that put these so-called scriptures together, they don't even sexually like women. They like each other. So that's very important. And that's not my opinion. OK, so let's go to pay. Let's go to first Corinthians. What you think is a man and woman's role is not necessarily a man and woman's role It's state sanctioned. It's not necessarily natural. You think it's natural because you're born and that's all you see. But you're living in the matrix. Okay? So let's go to 1 Corinthians. What does 1 Corinthians say about women? It's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34 to 35. Okay, what does it say? It says... 34, 35. Oh! So... Somebody need to pass the message to Joyce Myers and Juanita Bynum and all the female ministers. Psst. By the way, let your woman keep silent in churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. Mm. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home. For it is shameful for women to speak in church. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34 to 35. Psst, tell Joyce Myers what the Bible says. It's not Ken saying this. But if you want to know why women are in the position that they're in, is because people take their cue from books. It's how powerful the word is. OK, then I'm going to give you some names to show you that submissiveness is not the natural form of a woman. It's not the natural form. It's the domesticated version of a woman. Right. It's domesticated. 
women think that's their nature because it's been state authorized to teach that a woman's role is nurturing and this, that, and the third. But if that's the case, why when I look in nature, other female species don't have that same characteristic? I should be able to look at nature to find out who I am, okay? Female species in nature are highly aggressive. They hunt, they kill, they protect, and they provide. That's not my opinion. There is nothing submissive about a female lion <laughs> at all. There is nothing submissive about a female shark. So how come the, the female traits in nature doesn't transfer over into humanity? Oh, but it does. When those female species get into a circus or a zoo, they become domesticated to act harmless just like human females. Come on now. Let me read that again real quick. Right? So this is why we talk the way we do and we go about gender the way we go about it. We don't even know what gender is. We think we do. It's state sanctioned and we are children of the Board of Education. All right. First Corinthians chapter 34 to 35. It says. Psst. So this is for a woman even having testimony service in church. This is for a woman singing in a choir. Listen to what the Bible says. Let your woman keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak. But they are to be what? Submissive, as the law also says. What law? Let's go back to Genesis real quick. Let's go back to Genesis real quick to see where this started. Now, mind you, according to the Bible... The woman was, the man was not the head of the woman yet until she supposedly ate this, they call it an apple, but it's fruit, right? Genesis chapter three, verse 16. This is where your problems start. <clears throat> I, a man wrote this too. I'm, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for who? Your husband, and he shall rule over you. Now, earlier in the scriptures, when it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness, it says nothing about the woman being submissive at all. And it says nothing about her desire being for her husband. Only after, only after when they so-called their eyes are open and they fell, does the woman all of a sudden take this role underneath of the male? Before that, they were same, same, right? So this is where the, re, the, the world we live in, this is how we know this world. A matrix is a system that you live in, okay? Federally sanctioned, state sanctioned, Board of Education sanctioned, your our, our things that we learn is filtered, okay? It's filtered. Now, I'm not saying the Bible is true or false. What I'm saying is this is where legislators and those that create laws, this is where they get their cue for the last 2,000 years. Now, a lot of the parables in the Bible <clears throat> is global folklore, because Egypt had the t at the time um, had all world information. It was like the Library of Congress in D.C. where it housed global information, right? So people are pulling for what they want and mixing and chopping and creating a, their own salad bar. salad bar. But remember, in Europe, where the New Testament is supposedly taking place, the Church of Corinth, that's all Greek, Mesopotamia, that's all in that region. For you to read the Bible, you had to be a priest. You had to be uh, upper echelon. And the people that you're talking to could not read to even verify if the things that you're reading make sense. So if you just want to know how your reality got the way it, uh, it, it is, you got to start here. Right? So if, if, if a feminist really wants to change the structure, you got to start at the Bible. Because this is where America is pulling its ideals from. OK, if you want to, if you're a feminist, your war is not with so-called fuckboys. 
Your war is not with so-called, e well, if you want equality, you got to start here. You got to attack the academia because wage gaps and the role of man and woman, that's not coming out of thin air. These ideals are coming out of the Bible. Okay? So, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 34, 35. Let me read it again. For the people in the back, let your woman keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive. As the law also says, and if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands, for it is shameful to speak in church. That's very interesting, because what if the woman is smarter than her husband? It's very interesting. Let's go to First Timothy. It's interesting stuff right here. Then we'll read the Kabbalion and the principles in the Kabbalion are older than the Bible. <clears throat> so let's. And see what the Kabbalion says about gender. We don't know what gender is. We, we are going off state-sanctioned and board of education and pop culture terms of what a man is and what a woman is. We have no clue. <clears throat> we have no clue. All right. So let's go to 1 Timothy and make sure you read these things on your own. So you check it out for yourself. So you see that don't take my word for it. Do your own shit. You know, let's go to 2 Timothy verse 11. L listen again what they are saying women should do. Now, mind you, this is men saying this. So I read you what 1 Corinthians said. Let me tell you what 1 Timothy says. Here it is again for the women, for the people in the back. You listening? Let the women learn in silence with what? All submission. And do not permit a woman to teach or to have thought authority over a man, but to have silence, but to be in silence. Now, before it was about the husband. Now it's about any man. No woman is allowed to have authority over any man. Not, not It went from your husband, now it stretches to any man, according to the Bible. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And, I, and do not permit a woman to teach, to teach, or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell in trans, into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. Now, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So now, women, you could kind of see why your life kind of has socially has no value unless you get married or have a child. In Genesis, it said that your desire is for your husband. This is why women are thirsty to get married. It's all about finding a man. Well, that there you go. That's why. And then it says you will be saved in childbearing. So basically a woman, according to the scriptures, has no value unless she's married or gives birth. That's the only way she has value. She could be a philanthropist. She can be an amazing scientist. She can be an amazing architect. She can change the thinking of the entire planet. But it doesn't mean shit based on the narrative unless she is married, unless she has a child. This is what the book is saying. This is how your grandma thought, your aunties thought. This is how the women in your family think. This is how the women... <clears throat> Under the guise of Catholicism, Protestant, Lutheran, Christianity, these are the teachings. These are the teachings. So when I say that we don't know what gender is, we don't. Based on this narrative, because this is what you're born, and this is what's filtered, cut up, and cooked up to you. Let me read it again. This is in your Bible, right? 
See, they always talk about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, you know, those popular verses. But it's these verses that form the society and the narrative. And it's very, very dangerous to a public that deals with belief and bad comprehension skills. Okay. And I've been reading this since I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel. Like I, I'm good with the Bible, and but I have comprehension skills, and because I'm a dropout, surprisingly. <clears throat> so be, because I'm not school taught, I'm able to look at things for what it is, and I'm not an expert anything. Okay, so let's go back to Timothy again, and read Genesis three sixteen. To see what the so-called God is saying to the woman. That her desire is only for her husband. But I made this verse interesting. is because it's saying telling women not to teach. And no woman is allowed to have authority over any man. Not a husband. Any man. Any man. That means a bum out on the street. As long as he has a penis. He has dominion over you. You are not allowed to teach him anything based on the scriptures let's go back to it first timothy chapter 11 uh i'm sorry chapter 2 verse 11 let a woman learn in what silence with what all submission and i do not permit a woman to teach mm, 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 mm. that's that's heavy that's heavy that's heavy I do not allow a woman to teach. Well, I guess everybody voting for Hillary Clinton was out of pocket because it says no woman is supposed to have authority over any man. So if Hillary Clinton was the president, is that going against the Bible? That's for Christians to answer, not me. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission and do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over any man. I'm sorry, over a man. But to be in silence, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived, fell in and fell in transgressions. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Wow. So the only way for a woman to be saved, she got to give birth. So now understand this is how your grandmother thought and her mother thought and her mother thought women that have pretty much been under the doctrine of discovery and manifest destiny and anywhere the church of England dominated and the church of Rome dominated are taught these things. Okay. What do you think a missionary does? It teaches you the ways and the ideals of the culture they come from. These are not what you consider God's words. Because first of all, the creator doesn't put words in books. The creator puts words in people. And once I begin to talk about it, there is no way where I can talk about anything without any type of bias. This has no objectivity to it whatsoever. It's very biased and it fits a certain type of framework who does it benefit? It benefits males, but the males that wrote this, the scribes, are into phallic worship. They hate pussy. You have to understand that. The people that wrote these things did not care for women. They cared for each other because as Aristotle thought that when men lie together in virtue, it is good. It is good. Right. Even though women have a clitoris, a body part that is purely for sexual pleasure. Right. <clears throat> These men thought that the role of a woman for sex was baby making, make more soldiers. Right. <clears throat> and no, I'm not simping. This is data. Right. My cuff runneth over with pussy. So I don't need to do this to simp. Got to get that out of niggas heads. All right, so that's 1 Timothy. So Genesis 3, 16. 1 Corinthians uh, 4, chapter 14, 34 to 35. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. Let's go to Ephesians. God damn, this shit is really about women. Why is the Bible talk about women so much? 
Sheesh. Man. Okay. So let's go to Ephesians. Whoever's writing this shit don't like bitches. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. Uh Uh-oh. Wives. Here we go again with the submissive shit. Now, the thing that's it. Let me go back. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. When did the submissive shit start? Because if all creation is in Genesis and and all nature is is being created, then the roles of men and women should be specific. All right. <clears throat> hmm. Then a man shall leave his father, become mother. I want to, I need to find where women became submissive. What did this, what does this mean? Now, let me tell you, there are some women that really benefit off being submissive. Let me tell you why. Because they're not equipped to hunt. So there's women that are against other women because they want to be provided for, so they don't have to do shit. So there are women that prefer a man do everything. Why? Because she doesn't have the skills to go out and get shit herself, which I understand. <clears throat> so there are women that prefer that dynamic. But again, what submissive female species in nature exists a female bird goes and gets food a female lion goes and gets food a female shark goes and gets food a female pain every female in nature gets food but the human female is a domesticated female according to what men want now what men think is submissive energy is really nothing more than sexual energy that they that soldiers used to go and experience in brothels okay women reduced their hunting energy for sexual purposes okay so submissiveness actually really has its only it only has legs in sex because within capitalism, submissive energy will have you starve to death. Period. That is anti-capital. Because we have bills, we have insurance, it costs to die, the cost of living is going up, and inflation. So submissive energy you potentially starve. The reason why it worked in the early 1900s is because one dollar could get you five different things. You know what I'm saying? One dollar can get you five different things. Now, one dollar is obsolete, especially as companies uh, become and hit that trillion dollar mark. It creates a new floor. So $50,000 is going to spend like $35,000. <clears> dollars <throat> Let's go back to that Genesis 16 again. This is supposedly after the woman fell and she so-called sinned, okay? What does it say? I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for what? Here goes your purpose right here. Your desire shall be for your husband, right? Of course a man loves to hear that, especially a man that can't put under other men under his dominion. See, men that can't can't put other men in submission in warfare or thought love the idea of the creator making him the the uh, the leader, because guess what? Around other men, he's pussy. But if the Bible says he's supposed to be the leader and the creator designed it that way, then, well, you know, women are going to fall in line. So the person who benefits the most out of this is guys who are pussy around other guys because at at home, at home, he could get his shit off. But outside with other men, he's a fucking beta. So he's the one that really benefits this because all he has to do is have a penis and he automatically is the head of woman. It's very interesting. So. Ours, even though it's a separation of church and state, not really though. Our ideals come from old ideals. 
right? So this Bible, which was pretty much, it took some years to, 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 to put together. But in our reality, this shit is 1500, 2000 years old. So these, so the world has been a certain type of way for 2000 years. And we live in the world, we live in Western culture. We live in the ideals of Europeans. Okay. I speak in English. My name is Kenneth. My last name is Brisbane. That is a European reality. Okay. And what's good for them may not necessarily be good for me. Right. And, but you still got to dig deeper and figure out, you know what, how did it get like this? And ask yourself, is this natural or is this state sanctioned? This is state sanctioned because even though it's a separation of church and state, not really, because when you take an oath, you take it on the Bible. Okay. Now the etymology of gender <clears throat> is to bring forth. Let's see what the Kabbalion says about gender. And the ideals of the Kabbalion uh, at one time was for the initiated, right? And the ideals of the Kabbalion, the principles are older than the Bible. This is BC times, right? So let's see what the Kabbalion says about gender. And let's see, does it talk about submissiveness? Let's see, right? It starts off saying gender is in everything. Gender has its masculine and feminine principles. Principles. Gender manifests in all planes. Right? Gender is nothing but a principle that humans observed with energy. Okay? Masculinity is not exclusive to male. And femininity is not exclusive to female. All things have gender in it. Okay? Let the Kabbalion continues. The principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything. The masculine and feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only on the physical plane, not only on the physical plane, but on the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. On higher planes, it takes higher forms, but the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. I, tag me when someone mentions submissive. An understanding of his laws will throw light on many a subject that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything and every person contains two elements or principles. Or the great principle within it. Him or her. Every male has the female element also. Every female contains also the male principle. If you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation, and regeneration, you must understand and study the hermetic principle. It contains the solution of many mysteries of life. We caution you that this principle has no reference to the many base Per pernicious and degrading lustful theories, teachings, and practices which are taught under f fanatical titles and which are a prostitution of the great natural principle of gender. Such base revivals of the ancient infamous forms of phallicism tend to ruin mind, body, and soul. And the hermetic philosophy has ever sounded the warning note against these degrading teachings which tend to ward lust, licentiousness, and perversions of nature's principles. If you seek such teachings, you must go elsewhere for them. Hermeticism contains nothing for you along these lines. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. <clears throat> Us serving a male deity is phallic worship. Phallic worship. This is why we're upside down. It's pure phallic worship. And those that created these ideals come from phallic cults, which exists right now. You don't believe me. Do you see what keeps happening to these priests? Right? Hmm. Okay. That is phallic worship. Okay? So the ideals of what we think is the ideals of men and women is not natural at all. It comes from phallic cults. Deities before had a much different approach 
first of all, the God is an intellectual concept that comes out of the minds of people. This is how you go all over the world. There's some type of deity that exists. Okay. The deity that exists came out the mind of the people and it's based on the environment that they live in. So if people live in harsh climate, their deity is going to be an angry deity. If the de if they live in tropical environment, the deity is going to represent the jungle or the ocean. If they live in a desert terrain, the deity that they worship is going to live in a desert environment. Okay? So God, the ideal of God, it's an ideal. And first, and anything you can put in to, if you can count or you can name it, that means you can measure it. So the fact that God has a name tells you that this is the ideals of man. Now, what man? Because that's important. Because if I win the war, then the society that I have dominion over is going to begin to see the world through my lens. Right? See the world through my lens. Okay? Now, there's some... There are some people, the teachings in the Bible in its entirety, it resonates with them. They get it. They understand it. Right. And, 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 and then there are some who vibrate higher on some type of mystic, mystic traditions. However, what's natural and what's state sanctioned, there's, that's different. Male, female, that's natural. That's gender. The roles of man and male and female, that's state sanctioned because in each society, depending on how the state is, you'll see the behavior of men and women differ. Right? Okay. In Islamic culture, you see the roles of men and women different. There's no separation of church and state. So the Quran is the law. So based on what the Quran says, that's how women will behave. If you go to a different type of society, a communist country, women work. Right? They... But that's also state-sanctioned behavior. A Marxist country, depending on the country you live in, right? So what we think is natural is not natural. It's state-sanctioned, okay? It's state-sanctioned. So why am I talking? Oh, matter of fact, let's, let me go to my other notes. Let's, let me mention some women. For those that say, you know what, the original state of women is to be submissive. Really? Okay. So what about Ar Artisima of Kariah? She was named after the goddess of the hunt, who was Artemis. She was the queen of what is modern day Turkey, but it was Haley Carnisius. She was a naval commander. Herodotus, the Greek historian, said that she was a warrior. Who dis, whose dis, decisiveness and incredibly intelligent and was incredibly intelligent in her strategies. She was a queen who was a naval commander back then. She was a queen who was a naval commander in BC times in what was modern day Turkey, and that is Artisima of Koraya. Oh shit! What about Joan of Arc? Joan of Arc received visions from the archangel Michael to approach the military generals of France to fight for King Charles to expel the English. Uh. By 17, she played a major role in France's army. They had a, 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 a war that lasted basically 100 years, and in the 10 years she was in it, whoa, she basically helped push the English out. Joan of Arc was burned at the stake by the English when she was caught. She was that much a revolutionary. Are these submissive women? These was women that was going against the state after this is post religion. What about Lady Truia? She was the Vietnamese Joan of Arc or the equivalent basic uh, 1200 years before Joan of Arc. <clears throat> she was able to ride, raise 1,000 strong to rebel against Chinese forces. She rode on top of an elephant carrying two swords. Huh. <laughs> she, she rode on top of a war elephant carrying two swords. She would go by and chop other soldiers' heads off. This was a young chick, right? When her brother tried to dissuade her from revolting against the Chinese, 
This is what she says back to her brother. She responded, quote, I only want to ride the wind and walk the waves, slay the big wells of the eastern sea, clean up frontiers, and save the people from drowning. Why should I imitate others, bow my head, stoop over, and be a slave? Why resign myself to menial housework? After she said that to the brother, the brother that once dissuade her, dis tried to dissuade her from fighting against the Chinese, he wound up joining her military regime. One of the last recorded quotes from Lady Tree of Vietnam was, quote, I like to ride storms, kill sharks in the open sea, drive out the aggressors, reconquer the country, undo the ties to serfdom, and never bend my back to be the concubine of whatever man. <clears throat> this was 1,200 years before Joan of Arc. So women been banging, right? Women been banging. Why you don't know these people? What about Nakano Tico? She was a female samurai, one of the few. She was a female samurai, right? She fought in the Japanese Bashan War. Her and many other women fought in a unit called the Woman's Army. Their unit was so good that in history, the male soldiers did not want to record them because they had more confirmed kills than other men. And that's, you say her name, N-A-K-A-N-O-T-A-K-E-K-O. She was a female samurai. What about any other woman? What about Grace O'Malley, the, the Irish pirate? What about Zenobia, emperor of what is now Syria? What about Lozen, the Apache warrior? Why you never heard of these chicks? What about Queen Mother Ya Asa Asantawa of Ghana who fought the British? Of course, you got Harriet Tubman, freedom fighter, abolitionist. What about Queen Nanny of Jamaica, over, who was stolen from Ghana and wind up freeing 800 slaves? Submissive, huh? That's the nature of women? Really? Mm-hmm. So if we remove state-sanctioned ideals about women, and we remove the ideals woven into the fabric of academia, right? How will women be? They'll probably get back to their original nature before Genesis 3.16. When, according to the creator, her desire is for her husband. But whose ideals are those? Those are men's ideals. I'm a person like this. Let's balance everything out, right? And then let's see what's what. Don't start here and I'm here, right? If men are smarter, let's put them together, right? In the same race, let's run the same race. Don't one group start here and one group start here and then say, you know what? You're supposed to be submissive. Of course. Now we know why that women don't have feel like they have any value unless they're married or have children. It comes from the scriptures, all right? So that's my time. Rewind the video. Tell your mom and about me. Yo, check out Dealings Over Feelings. You can get it for for 20 right now. You get three ebooks plus one album. You can click the link right there. If you want to follow up with me too, 888-565-8734. That's the Nothing But Game hotline. So until then, see you guys next time. Peace.